Um, so I'm Matt Kropp, uh, CTO for BCGX. Um, hopefully you all know who BCG is. You've heard maybe the growth share matrix, you know, that's a strategy firm. We have a group called BCGX, um, which is building AI solutions, so about 3,000 data scientists and software engineers that, that actually build AI. Um, and I, I, I think I should say, why is BCG here? Um, because you might not think of us in, in the context of generative AI. Um, we look at what's coming with AI as diffusing into everything, everything in business. Our business is helping our clients make their businesses more efficient, create competitive advantage, um, and win in the market. Every one of those processes is going to be uh, diffused with AI. And so our business has to be the business of AI. But I want to make the case about optimism, techno-optimism, really from the context or from the position of our clients. Um, so we serve the Fortune 500, the Global 2000. I last year spoke with 150 different companies, the CEOs, executive teams, and boards about generative AI. Um, when ChatGPT launched, it only took a, a couple of months before our phone was ringing off the hook. We had 3,000 companies calling us, asking us for, their, for advice on this. And I, I can tell you, in talking to 150 companies, every single one of them is optimistic about this technology. Every single one of them is interested in how can this help their business, how can this create competitive advantage for them. And th there's good reason. Um, so we did a study, um, partnered with uh, Harvard, Wharton, and MIT, um, where we actually did a scientific study testing the impact of generative AI on knowledge workers. We took 750 of our consultants, these are highly educated uh, knowledge workers, put them in this study, um, and they, they baselined everybody's performance, and then they gave them a task, and they took half of them, gave them uh, GPT-4. As you would expect, they were more productive, um, so they finished their tasks 25% faster, they did 15% more work. The surprising thing, though, was the quality of their results, the quality of their output was 40% better than the control. So the, the people using ChatGPT had better answers. The other thing that was really interesting is the bottom performers, so of the baseline, the people that performed on the bottom half, actually with GPT-4 performed as well as the top performers. So what that means is your new people, you know, every company has new people at the bottom. Those people can perform as well as the experienced people. It's going to completely change the way that um, we think about skilling and talent. So companies are optimistic. Um, I will say last year there was a lot of learning and experimentation, not a lot of results. We're not yet seeing anything at scale. Nobody's really seen impact. But we are now seeing companies that are pu putting forward big goals. Um, so uh, a financial company that is taking out $100 million of their call center costs by next year. Um, a major bank that has a billion dollar cost out target using generative AI. These are big numbers. Um, so lots of optimism. Now, they do have some concerns, um, not about whether this technology is good, but rather, um, how do I get adoption? And what do my people think about this? I very often get a question, how should, how should I talk about this with my employees? And so we think there's a, 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 an important way to look at this, and, I, and I'll, I'll close with this. Um, so we did a study actually coming out of COVID around what drives engagement at work. We have a lot of questions about you know, work from home and hybrid work and so forth. And in the study, uh, we, we found that when you do things to improve efficiency in an organization, engagement doesn't move very much, 5%. But when you do things that increases enjoyment at work, joy at work, engagement goes up by 40%, a very big effect. Now I say it's kind of obvious, like if, if I do something that makes it more fun to be at work, I might want to be at work more. So it's sort of an obvious statement. Um, but when we're talking about AI and generative AI, we tend to talk about efficiency and productivity. And the way I would put this is if I go to my staff and I say, here's some technology that's going to make you more efficient, what they hear is, here's a robot that's going to come and take your job. We're working with a tech company that um, put a chatbot into their call center and their customer support organization um, to, to make them more efficient. 
And then they wondered why only 15% of their customer support organization was using the chatbot. It's pretty obvious because they know exactly what this means. I'm bringing this in to, to reduce my staff. So we think that the right framing is actually to look at the process that people work in and identify the toil in that process and identify the joy in that process. And what we're doing with generative AI is automating the toil but leaving the joy. We're not automating everything. We're automating the parts that people don't want to do, that take a lot of effort, that take a lot of manual effort. And so we get productivity, but we're left with a staff that actually has a better job, that has a more enjoyable job. And when we get productivity, we create um, more abundance for the world. So my parting thought would be what we're really trying to do, and maybe this, this is an ask to everybody in this room, what we're really trying to do is drive productivity, drive um, the abundance in the world, and create more enjoyable jobs, more joy for all of our staff. Thank you. Thank you.